Look at this number, 1.91 gigabytes for a simple Python API. That is absolutely ridiculous. That is what happens if you build a Docker file the lazy way. And this, less than 200 megabytes. It's the same app, it's the same code, but it's 10 times smaller, it's more secure, and it builds faster. Today, I'm going to show you this exact setup that I use in 2025. We're ditching pip for UV, we're ditching Debian for Alpine, and we are finally learning how to use Docker stages properly. Let's clean this mess up. In here, we have a fairly standard Docker file. We extend from Python 3.13. We're going to install a bunch of debug dependencies to troubleshoot locally if something goes wrong. We're copying the UV binary from the UV image. Then we're copying over the pyproject.toml and the UV logs, which also makes the virtual environment. We're copying over the source files and we're booting the app using UV corn. There's nothing too fancy about this, other than the fact that it ends up being 1.91 gigabytes big and the project itself is fairly straightforward. We only have three dependencies here, namely FastAPI, PsychopG2 and SQL model. Uh, there's a dev dependency here, which is rough and the source code is fairly minimal. We have database connection, a main file, etc. If you want to know more about the source code of this API, how it works, how it uses all the latest tools, and how it's deployed towards Kubernetes, I have a full video about that. Link is in the description. Here we are in an empty Docker file. Let's build this up the correct way. First, I'm going to use a base setup stage. And in this base setup, instead of deriving our Docker file from Python 3.13, which comes with the entirety of Debian, I'm going to explicitly set this to derive from Alpine, which is a lot smaller. I'm also going to add a bit of Python optimizations. For example, I'm going to set that UV always compiles the bytecode. While this makes building the Docker image a bit slower, it greatly reduces the startup time of the image. Also note that I give this stage a name, which is called Python base. And this is all that I'm going to do in this base stage. In the next stage, I'm going to create my builder. I'm going to extend from Python base, which again extends from the Alpine image. I'm going to call this builder. I'm going to copy the UV binary from the astral image, same as we did before in the bloated Docker file. I'm going to copy over the pyproject.toml and UV log file. Again, same as we did before. And this looks fairly similar. The only difference that I do is that I do not install any dev dependencies. So this only installs the runtime dependencies that are needed to run the app. And this wraps up the builder stage. The next stage is going to be a bit more involved. I'm going to extend again from Python base. It's that one. I'm going to copy over the UV binary again from the Astro image, simply because in this particular stage, I do want to install the dev dependencies. I'm also going to install a bunch of troubleshooting tools like curl and git and vim that allows me to jump into this container and debug the code if that is necessary. I'm setting the work directory and now comes the fun bit. I'm going to copy over the virtual environment that was created from the builder. And as you can remember, we have here the builder, which is that one. And since that one already has created the virtual environment, I can simply copy that over. I don't have to create a new one here. This next bit is fairly similar to the builder app. I'm again going to copy over the pyproject.toml and I'm going to fully install our virtual environment again. Now remember, since we already copied over the virtual environment from the builder, it's not going to completely reinstall this. It's only going to install the dependencies that it hadn't installed before, which for this dev stage is only the dev dependencies. And then I'm going to start up fast API in the dev mode. This gives me the possibility to auto reload the app if I make any changes to the source code. As you can see, or if you might've noticed, I only copy over the pryproject.toml, which is only needed because I kind of want to install the dev dependencies. 
I'm not copying in the source code. And that is because if I boot up this container, I want it to function when I mount the source directory into the container itself so that it has access to the live source code that I'm currently editing. I'm going to show you how to do this later on. And now our dev stage is complete. Last thing we need to do is add a production stage to this. So let's do that. The production stage is a bit smaller than the dev stage. First of all, again, we're going to extend from Python base and we're going to call this prod. That's the name of our stage. Before we do anything else, I'm going to add in a new user and I'm going to set the user of this image to app user. This makes sure that when we boot up this container, it's not running as root, but it's running as app user. And next, I'm going to copy over the virtual environment from the builder stage that we already had before. In this case, I'm not going to copy over the UV binary because I don't need to reinstall anything. I only need the virtual environment. And since this is going to run in production, I am going to copy over the source code into this image. And then lastly, I'm going to use UVCorn to boot up the app. And now we have a Docker file that has four stages. We have the base stage, and the only responsibility here is to extend from the Alpine image and set a bit of optimizations. The second stage is the builder stage, in which we already pre-create the virtual environment with most of the dependencies. Thirdly, we have a dev stage that we can use for local running of our application and for debugging if we need that. And lastly, we have a production stage that we can push to a Docker repository and run this somewhere in production. Now the next step, if we now have a Docker file, is building these stages. And we can simply use a normal Docker build command that I've done here. I'm going to pass in the Docker file, which is optional if your Docker file is just called, well, Docker file. But with the dash dash target flag, we can specify to which stage this Docker file builds. And in this case, it's dev. And my tag is going to be lean-dev. So let's build this. Nice, that one is done. Let's see how big this one is. Well, it's about 385 megabytes. It's still a lot lower than our base Debian image that we had before. And this still contains all of the dev dependencies. If we then want to build the production image, the only thing we have to do is swap out the dev target for prod and give this a different tag. And since this reuses the stages, well, most of the stages from the dev image, it doesn't have to rebuild those. So building the production image should be really quick. And it was almost instantaneously. It skipped over the builder stage since it already built that one during the dev image. It only had to copy the virtual environment to the production stage and copy in the source code. And let's see how big this one is. 198 megabytes. Nice. So now you know how to set up multi-stages in Docker files, what the benefits are, and how to target them during the building of the image. Lastly, I want to show you how to use this dev image in a Docker Compose file so that you can reuse this during development. So I have here a Docker Compose file that contains three services. First of all, there's a database service that is just a simple Postgres image. I'm also setting up a few environment variables so that we can connect to it. Now for the dev service, we can specify what the build context is and we are specifying the target stage in our Docker file. And this allows the Docker Compose file to understand which target, so which stage that we need to run. And as I mentioned before, I'm going to mount in the source code so that we can have live reload support in this container. And the rest is fairly straightforward. And we're going to add a depends on. And the third service is simply the prod image which is almost the same as a dev image. We just don't have any volume here that mounts the source code. Now let's run this. There we go, it's up and running. And the nice thing is that we can just tell the Docker Compose file that we want to boot up the dev service. And since the dev service has a dependency on the database service, it boots up both of them. And here we can also see that FastAPI is starting up a development server, exactly what we want. If we navigate to localhost 8000, 
slash docs. We can see the OpenAPI docs. Neat. I said before that this has live reloading support, so let's try that as well. Let's scroll down here, open up one of the files, for example, a route. And you know what? I'm going to remove the root route. Did you see that? FastAPI noticed that there was a file change in this route. It's going to reload the app. And now navigating back to the browser, if you reload this, we should see that this root route should be disappearing. And it did. So we went from an image that was only two gigabytes big to two highly specialized images, one for development, one for production. The development image is around 400 megabytes, which is fine for local development, and the production image was less than 200 megabytes. The full code, including the fast API, the Docker file, the Docker images, it's all in the description. If you liked this video and found it useful, please consider subscribing and liking, and see you in the next one.